Today, I'm going to talk about the hidden source of anemia, both B12 and iron anemia, that you probably have never heard before. And this involves a microbe called H. pylori. And H. pylori is a fascinating bacteria that the majority of the population have already in their stomach. And when the timing and the environment is just right, it can come out of remission and create all sorts of problems, primarily with gastritis, inflammation of the stomach, ulcers, as well as atrophy of your stomach. So the stomach starts shrinking. Out of all the places to exist, why would you want to live in an acid stomach, right? And also it actually eats iron, right? That's one of the things it eats. Now, typically what causes this microbe to come out of remission and create problems is when the stomach pH loses the acidity. Okay, so the more alkaline your stomach becomes, the more that that microbe can survive and potentially come out of remission. And when the pH becomes more alkaline, as well as in individuals that are susceptible, like their immune system is weaker. As a survival mechanism, it also has an enzyme called urease, which basically causes the breakdown of urea, and then that turns into ammonia. Now, this is a survival mechanism because ammonia is that it's extremely alkaline. It has a pH of like 11. I mean, think about this. We have the stomach, which has a pH between 1.5 to 3, which is like battery acid. So you have a pH of 11 for ammonia. It's super alkaline. And that allows this microbe to uh, exist and thrive. Now, there's also another component, molecular mimicry. Okay, what is that? That is another survival mechanism where that microbe can mimic your own stomach cells. And so it's trying to go underneath the radar. And for the most part, your immune system is tricked by that, but not 100%. A lot of times there's an immune reaction, okay? And then what that immune reaction does is it starts attacking your own stomach cells, as well as uh, something called the intrinsic factor. And both of those situations lead you to a very severe B12 deficiency. And then when the stomach atrophies because of this microbe, now you're going to get what's called pernicious anemia, which is a B12 condition. In the first phase, when you have gastritis, you have a lot of inflammation and you have a lot more acid. And that quickly decreases as there's more and more damage to the stomach and you start having atrophy and you lose the function of these little gastric cells. And then the stomach becomes more alkaline. So you start off being too acid, and then it goes over here to alkaline, okay? And that's just a survival mechanism. And when your stomach is not alkaline, now we lose the ability to absorb iron. We can't activate iron that's inactive to the active form. We can't absorb iron. So now we become iron deficient. So we have both an iron deficiency and a B12 deficiency, not a good situation. So here you are taking all this iron, taking all this B12 and wondering why it's not working. You're trying to fix this thing, but there's something else going on completely underneath it. And of course, once you're diagnosed with H. pylori, the treatment is at least two months of antibiotics, okay? Usually multiple antibiotics. And the real unfortunate problem with that is that a lot of people end up with antibiotic resistance to this H. pylori microbe. So now the antibiotics won't work anymore, okay? Because the microbes quickly counter that mechanism. So here you are, two months of therapy, right? You have all these side effects of the condition as well as all the side effects from the antibiotic in your gut and other places. This is why the treatment for H. pylori with antibiotics is um, it's not very successful long-term because they're not looking down the road of what's really happening. They're thinking that this microbe is the problem, and so they just need to wipe it out, and then the problem solved, when in fact, it's just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more to do with the pH of your stomach, the strength of your immune system, which now you just weaken because of the antibiotics. Now, we still have gastritis. We might have ulcers, and we have atrophy of the stomach. We also now can't protect ourselves against microbes that are coming in from our food, so now we have an increased tendency to get infections to the body, viruses, bacteria, fungal, you name it. We also can't absorb minerals too well. We also can't break down protein too well. So you can see this problem goes from bad to worse. What can we do about this? I would recommend taking something that is more of a natural antibiotic that is not as potent 
you have to take it longer, but there's minimal side effects. Okay. And one of the best things they've researched on this is sulforaphane, which is interesting because it's not really a plant. It's a chemical in a plant. It's in broccoli sprouts, sauerkraut. It's in the cruciferous vegetables. So sulforaphane is a compound, is a potent antimicrobial. And the extra cool thing about this is this, it can work against antibiotic resistant microorganisms and infections. Okay. So if you have this antibiotic resistant microbe, well, sulforaphane can actually still work on that. Whereas a antibiotic won't work on that. So we're taking a natural remedy, not as potent, but we're taking it longer to make sure that we do this without the side effects. So that's step one. You may also want to add another natural antibiotic called wormwood, okay? Wormwood extract. And uh, you don't have to take much. You just take a small amount over a long period of time. And I'm talking about three to four months. Now you can get your sulforaphane from a supplement, or I would recommend better yet, get it from microgreens or sprouts, broccoli sprouts or broccoli microgreens, right? And have a little bit of that every day in your salad. That's what I would recommend. The next thing I'm going to recommend as a solution is zinc. There's many different forms of zinc you can take, but it's more important to just get zinc than to focus on what type of form of zinc. But zinc can be very effective against ulcers, gastritis, as well as healing the stomach and helping you build up your hydrochloric acid. And so once the gastritis is settled down and the ulcer is healed, then we want to add betaine hydrochloride or apple cider vinegar to your stomach, but not until the ulcer is gone and the inflammation is gone. The other thing that you want to do that can greatly help put things back in the balance is to either take a really good probiotic or better yet, start consuming a little sauerkraut or even some pickles. There are certain microbes in sauerkraut and pickles that are very beneficial to help counter this H. pylori. Because remember, we have the good bacteria and the bad bacteria, right? So we want to increase the good from this probiotic or the sauerkraut and help counter the situation. And plus, sauerkraut also has sulforaphane, and it's really good for the digestion if someone has gastritis or for that matter, any digestive issues. All right, so now that you know this other source of anemia, which is very valuable if you have anemia, uh, it'd probably be important to show you the other causes of anemia, okay? And I put that up right here, check out the video.